Hey, I'm on early. You're seeing this, Bailey? I'm on early. How's everybody doing? Welcome to tonight's live talking about building friendships with your adult kids. If you're joining us as people begin to join, hi, Shannon Walker. Is that Shannon or Sharon? Sharon, I'm sorry, I can't, can't read. Hey, invite your friends, let them know that we're going live. We're going to talk tonight about building a friendship with your adult kids. Uh, man, I have, I've been talking about this and I got, man, I have gotten some comments now. I've gotten uh, a lot of people who are uh, agreeing with what I'm saying. I got some that don't like it at all. And uh, so we're going to, in a moment, in just a moment, I want to spend a few minutes. Hey, look at all these folks coming in. It's great to see you. Go and let everybody know that, uh, you let your friends know that we are starting a TikTok live, and uh, if I'm supposed to be uh, doing something that somebody needs to remind me on, on my team, uh, let me know because I got a few things going on, and I may have missed it. I'm gonna, while we're taking just a minute to get ready, let me look and see if there's something I uh, basically my daughter Bailey tells me what to do. That's just really how it works. So I'm going to look here and see. I know that she sent me something reminding me about what I was doing. See, there it is. I wanted to know uh, I wanted to know what your free giveaway was going to be. Anybody want a free giveaway? Raise your hand down in the comments if you want a free giveaway tonight about some communication tips uh, relating to your adult child. I want to give, you know, here's the thing. My big thing, especially here at Gobi, is it's not about sermons. It's about strategies. I want you to have practical things that you can begin to try in your house. Uh, I have some people many times, or I have a few anyway, almost every time I am somewhere live in person or whether we're doing this, that basically tells me that I don't know what I'm talking about, and uh, which is fine. You know, everybody is entitled to their opinion. But my thing is, well, go try what I'm saying and then tell me whether it works or not because you're here because it doesn't work for you. And uh, so I want uh, I want to encourage you uh, to invite your friends to take these little practical uh, gifts that we give you. Really, they're just PDFs uh, that we want you to have of, hey, man, here's some practical ways that uh, we can help you. Uh, here's some things we want you to try and see if we can find uh, a way uh, to be a blessing to you. So we're talking tonight here at 731 as we begin. We're talking about uh, building a relationship, a friendship with your adult kids. If you're new to Gobi, I want you to, want you to hear me just kind of background wise uh, say this, that we were told as parents the entire time we were raising our kids, kids don't need a friend. They got plenty of friends. They need a parent, which is true. Uh, as children are growing and developing in our home, then they need a parent. They need uh, that kind of direction in their life. By the way, can we all agree that all of us answer to somebody, right? I mean, there is... There's not a job on the planet that you get paid for that you don't have to answer for your, what you do. I mean, there's a, a, there's a responsibility that we have uh, in the world today. And so when we let our kids do whatever they want to do, you know, I, I have kids that I talk to, students who go, I just don't understand why my parents feel like they can always tell me what to do. Well, it's because you live in their house, because you're dependent upon them, Uh that that's a part of look somebody's asking me why my eyelashes are curled and i'm wearing mascara i'm not my eyelashes aren't curled and i'm not wearing mascara i mean look at these bags trust me i'd be taking care of these bags if i had that kind of issue uh anyway sorry look a bird I, how do you i have to answer that how do you not answer that you gotta go hey wait uh so you you need to be a parent as long as your child i think is financially tied to you. I think that's a part of 
what all of us need to kind of hang on to. Your kids are not always going to like it when you're growing up. My daughter just texted me on the side and said, well, you are half girl, which thank you, Bailey. I appreciate you saying that about me and my curled eyelashes, but uh, they're not curled. I have no mascara. Trust me. Uh, but as your child be- moves into their adult years, as they begin to become independent, and by the time they are not dependent on you, then the relationship changes. No, you don't stop being a parent, but you pair it differently. And the goal, I believe, is that you, what you want, the end in mind is you want to have a friendship, a healthy friendship with your adult child. Is it going to be like every other one of your friendships? Of course not. But you become more of a peer and a trusted advisor than you do as a parent. And I would say that a majority of the time that I have conversations with parents of adult kids who can't seem to get over this this uh, the stress and the relational hill of of a positive relationship with their kids is because they when you have a child who is 28 years old and you're treating them like they're 16 years old that's not going to work it, no, it's just not going to work out for you it's not going to work out for them. And so the goal is a friendship. Well, what what do you need? What are some key aspects of building a friendship with your child? Well, number one, I would say this, it's grace. It's grace. Uh, you want to understand, as I said a moment ago, you don't treat a 16-year-old the way you would treat a six-year-old. People used to say to me, my kids, we had kids really early and they'd go, I can't I just can't imagine letting my kid drive. And it's, well, if your kid's 10, they're, they're not ready to drive. And you, you, so that principle is true. The grace is, hey, I'm building a relationship with my adult child, but my child is a young adult. They haven't seen as much of the world as I have. They tend to overreact to things that I don't overreact to because I have some life experience they don't have. And so if you're, you know, if you're 55 years old and you have, some 28-year-old kids who are married and out on their own, they're not going to respond every time the way your other 55-year-old friends are going to. But the goal is to build a healthy relationship with them. So I want to give them some grace as I'm beginning to build this friendship. But I'm the parent part of me is I'm still going to kind of take the lead in trying to paint this picture for my kids of a healthy relationship. I'm going to have some grace in it. Number one. Number two, we're, we're, there's going to be boundaries in a, in a friendship. I don't know any healthy friendship of adults that doesn't have some clear boundaries. Uh, I'm not going to go to one of my friend's house at 10 o'clock and show up unannounced. I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to do that with my kids. That's a boundary. Uh, I'm, I'm not... Uh, going to call one of my friends at seven or or eight o'clock at night. And if they don't answer, call back 10 times. And then when they call, I'm not going to jump them about why they haven't called me back yet. I mean, there was a time as a young adult, uh, I'm a guy. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're not as great about calling our parents as we ought to. And I had my mom say to me, you know, every time I would call, I got like 10 minutes of why it had been so long since I'd called. And one time she said, I just don't know why you don't call more. And I said, well, I kind of got to get past that first 10 minutes of why I haven't called. And if you wouldn't spend 10 minutes of this conversation, tell me why I hadn't called, I probably would call more. I finally was kind of honest with her, right? So we had to kind of set some boundaries. And the best time to set a boundary is before you find yourself in the middle of a conflict. The best time uh, to set that kind of boundary with an adult relationship is before you ever find yourself in that situation. Don't assume something. Don't assume because, well, I'm their mother. Okay, well, I'm your friend, and I'm still not calling 10 times, and I'm still not showing up at your house uh, unannounced. Uh, And I don't want to, like, I, I want them, to my friends, to call me 
So I'm not going to begin every conversation with all the things they did not do. It's boundaries that you want to set up with your kids. It's it's boundaries about your expectations. Let me tell you something uh, that I've watched so many times. I have friends that have vacation homes. They have vacation homes at the lake or they have vacation homes at the mountains. Uh, some of my friends have vacation homes at a lake that's not too far from where we live here in North Texas. And so the weekends in the summer is a time that they all go out there. And what happens a lot of times to my friends is their kids come and four or five weekends in a row, their kids come and they don't help do anything. They, they uh, you know, the, they expect, there's kind of this expectation that mom and dad are going to provide the food and they're going to clean up and they're going to gas up the boat. And then if it, they're going to kind of pay for everything. And I watch these parents get resentful and frustrated. They're more tired every weekend coming home than they were going out because they're working for their big family that came. And, and I have said to friends of mine before, uh, I've said to them, Hey, like you have to set those boundaries early. Your, your kids have done that because you continue to do that for them. It is possible in a friendship to love somebody, to have a healthy relationship and kind of say, Hey, we're not going to do it this way. How would you do that with an adult, an adult friend? What you would do is, Hey, we want you to come out this weekend. Uh, I'm going to cook a meal. One of the nights, if you bring something to cook one night and we'll just, Switch off helping each other with the dishes. That's setting a boundary. You're saying to them, hey, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. Here's kind of the expectation. That's what healthy friendships are about. So you want to set clear boundaries. That's an important part of what you do. And if I'm looking over to my left, it's not that I'm not paying attention. It's that some of our team is reminding me of some of the questions that we've gotten. And uh, we're going to talk about some of those uh, can I just say this too, by the way, a bunch of you had said this and uh, like, I don't want to be a hammer or anything, but let me say this, like our kids don't want to hear how things were 20 years ago or how things were back when we were growing up. I mean, that's something you talk to your other friends about, not to your adult kids about, right? I mean, this whole thing with parents started uh, when... When I said one time on a TikTok, hey, I got some great news for you. I'm going to set you free. You don't have to tell your kids everything you're thinking. You really can keep it to yourself and just talk to your other friends about it. And that kind of blew up. But I I was being honest. I mean, you don't have to say to them, like, they don't care about how it was 30 years ago. And we don't live 30 years ago. We're raising adult kids now. Now, those, what you're saying is those values shouldn't change and they shouldn't, but we're going to have to clearly communicate that to them because they didn't live 30 years ago. And, uh, you know, I have one mom that's saying here that, uh, man, I I tried to kind of set some boundaries and now I don't get to see my one and only grandbaby. And that's the fear, right? I mean, that's the unspoken fear for, for, for most of us is that we try to set boundaries and then our kids punish us and they don't let us see our grandkids. And that fears. So we find ourselves in a place where we get into unhealthy friendships so that we can get something that we really want to get. And that's dysfunctional. That's not going to be healthy for us. It's not going to be healthy for them. And that's really what this sweet lady is talking about. I mean, I understand it because. It's it's the whole thing of man. We, our kids aren't they're they're not fifty five year old adults. They're operating like twenty eight year old adults, and sometimes they take their ball and go home. And uh, I think we just have to keep loving them and keep be- believing that at some point, when we stay as healthy as we can and relate to them in a healthy way, which boundaries are healthy, at some point that's going to come uh, back around, and we're going to love our kids. Uh, back into a healthy relationship. Uh, and that's very important for us. The, the other thing I would say is that uh, one of the habits that we have to break when our, as our kids become adults is that we have to break this habit. You know, I have parents of younger kids tell me all the time, I feel like all my conversations are correcting 
my kids. Well, as we have to break that habit with our adult kids. We we can catch them doing something wrong. That's or doing something differently than we would do it. Let me put it that way. We could catch them doing something different all, all the time. Uh, and, but in a healthy adult friendship, there is uh, there is more encouragement than there is correction. Okay, let me say that again. In a healthy adult relationship, there is more encouragement than there is correction. And and w- with our kids, because we want to help them, how they receive this is, man, you're always correcting me. How I'm doing it with my kids or how I'm doing this, it's never right. And I'm not saying there's not times, just like there's times in our adult relationships to say, man, I, I don't, I don't think that's good. I, I don't think that's good for you. And sometimes, you know, See if I've had to like risk an adult relationship because I'm not being a good friend if I don't say to them, hey, man, I don't think that's a good decision for you to have that kind of relationship with a coworker of the opposite sex. I just think that's a dangerous place. And that's what friends do. And sometimes you have to kind of risk at some level that relationship. But that's the exception, not the rule. And so we have to begin to uh, to get really intentional about making sure that we're finding ways to encourage our kids. Now I'm I'm leading this uh, I'm leading this this little discussion tonight on my iPhone. Uh, most of you are watch are on TikTok, I would guess, on your phones. Uh, and I, I want to tell you that the greatest gift of uh, a smartphone for me has been the reminders, the reminder section, because. Uh, I know that if I'm left to my own kind of just thinking about it, when I think about it, uh, I'm not going to do as well as when I'm intentional. And so what I have done in my phone is for my kids, all four of my kids, that's a whole nother discussion about in-law kids versus your blood kids. And uh, we can talk about that sometime. I know some of you have some painful experiences there, uh, but uh, I'm just, so in general, you know, I've always said, "Hey, when you when you marry my daughter, it's 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 you two. You're you're one, and so I'm I'm going to be for both of you. I'm not going to take sides." And we kind of learned how to do that. But with with my all four of those kids, I have reminders in my phone that says, "Encourage Ross, encourage Bailey, encourage Grant, encourage Michelle." Uh, at different times in different ways. Why? Because I want to. I want to ensure. I want to put all the safeties up there I can, that all my conversations and interactions with them that I am, I'm giving them encouragement more than I'm bringing correction. And so I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, there's nothing. I mean, you don't know how my situation is. Hey, I'm not saying it's not hard sometimes, uh, to to find the good. But you know, you you can say. To your child, you can send a text. Hey, just want you to know, I'm praying for you today. I love you. Hope you have a great day. Uh, that's a word of encouragement. Uh, you can my my son-in-law is a college football coach, and and I I, tr- I have a reminder in my phone that on game day for him in the morning, I, I always send him a text. It's hey man, go get him today. Uh, Coach them up. You got this. Just something. Why? Because I, I want to build a pattern of encouragement in his life. If not, the the interact. I'm busy, and so the only actions I would probably have uh, would have a chance to be more corrective than encouragement. And look, here's the thing. Kimberly asked this question. I see it coming up. I, I every now and then my eyes work, and they're working right now. Well, does it matter to you if they reply? Of course it matters to me. But if they don't reply, I don't say anything about it. I don't quit doing it. I'm not doing this to get a reply out of them. I'm doing this because I want to continually give them encouragement. And uh, I, I just, I don't want to be that adult parent. I don't know what's going on in my kid's life that day when I tell them I'm praying for them. They may, they may be wrangling two kids into the minivan like, Bailey is, you know, trying to get all the Captain Crunch off the back of the seat or whatever she's doing. And she may she may miss it. I missed, I don't know, I was telling Montana, I missed, I don't know, 15 texts today. Uh, I, I, 
time up. Oh, it paused on me. There it is. Where I'm, I'm getting a ton of texts today, and I missed two or three of them. It's not that I don't care about that person. Uh, it's just I missed it. And like one guy today, I texted him from three days ago. What if it, what if he would have texted me and I didn't text him back? And all of a sudden I get a call. Why didn't you text me back? W- would that build our relationship? <laughs> would that make me want to respond more? Of course it wouldn't. And so again, we want to look at that. We want to look at it through the eyes of what does a healthy adult relationship look like? And can I build that kind of relationship with my kids? So, uh, you know, as I read a lot of the comments that you bring in about it, uh, I know some of you are in like uh, your your kids have ghosted you or they've, they've gone no contact on you. Uh, and, and my thing is, uh, I have found in my life, like some of you aren't going to like this. I get it. This is not a fun thing to say. It's just, but I, I'm, if we're going to do this, I'm just going to tell you how, what I believe to be true. I have found in my life that any relationship I have gets better when I commit to work my side of the street and let God deal with the other side of the street. Uh, there was a time, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe even not that long ago, uh, that my, uh, my wife, Mike and I, uh, my wife, Mike and I, we we were, I mean, I don't know what I just did. See if this thing keeps moving around, but we, we were, we, it wasn't like we're fixing to split up struggling. It was just, man, it was hard. And one day I was out back and I was complaining to God about it, praying if it makes you, makes me look better. And, and and I distinctly felt like in my spirit, I had this thought. I always say, I feel like the Lord spoke. And some of you think I'm like hearing voices. That's not what I'm saying. But I just felt like the Lord in my spirit was saying, uh, hey, work your side of the street. And I started arguing with God about it. Like, hey, do you, but she did this and she did this and she's not doing this. And all I kept hearing was work your side of the street. And I want to tell you, that was one of the most uh, difficult and yet, looking back, beneficial seasons of my life where when I was tempted to react, I, I, I just I got like in a zone of, hey, man, I'm just going to work my side of the street. And I watched that relationship get better. Uh because I focus on the one thing I could control, which was me. And it's super hard. And uh, you kind of give up your rights to be right. Uh, and to get the last word. Uh, and it's humbling. And, and I think it's true with your kids. I think it's true in your if you're married, in your marriage. I think it's true in your deepest adult relationships that you've had for the longest. And I think it's true with your adult kids that there are times like you, you got to work your side of the street. They're not responding well, but you can't control their response. So you just continue to encourage and you're quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry, which is fun to read in church and really hard to do. Uh, And it's hard, but then it's it was God saying in the first place, right? That's what I can control. And you say I'm sorry when you miss when you blow it. And I mean, my daughter's on here. I don't think my son is. Uh, I just I, I agree with this McMe who said, like influence comes when you don't always have to be right. I I, I think that's true, and. Uh, I think the hardest people to to do the Jesus way with, the quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, forgive one another, a love keeps no record of wrongs, all that that we all know from the Bible. Like the hardest place to do it is with the people we are the closest to and the ones we love the most. And uh, But let's kind of go over this again just kind of quickly. 
I don't want to keep you forever, but it, you want to begin with grace. You want to set boundaries. You want to encourage uh, more than you correct. Uh, and then finally, you want to say, I'm sorry, when you blow it. Uh, no matter how they respond, no matter whether or not uh, they accept your apology, uh, no matter how hard sometimes it is to say I'm sorry and then have someone make you feel worse, you, you do it because that's your part of the thing. And uh, I think what happens in this thing is when we focus on our side of the street, which I guess could be a five, number five if it wanted to be set, but I mean, what happens is, man, like, I think God starts changing you some. And uh, a better you makes a better relationship, right? And I know it can be painful. Uh, and I get the folks who say, hey, man, you come to my house, it's my rules. I get all that. I mean, I understand that. And these kids, said, I understand all that. I'm old, too. I get it. But, like, that doesn't get you where you, what you want, which is a healthy, uh, growing, not perfect all the time, but a relate an, an adult relationship with your adult kids. And uh, for those of you who, you know, we, our grandparents, <laughs> we joke around about, hey, man, we put up with our kids because we love our grandkids, you know, and all that. The thing is, it's like my kids need to know that as much as I love my grandkids and I sent five videos out today after school because I missed them and I just, each one of them, I just wanted to just say a word to them. Uh, as much as I love those grandkids, man, I love my kids. Uh, and I, I want to be a part of their life. And so I want to be the very best version of me that I can be because it gives me opportunity to, to be in as healthy a relationship as possible. I know it's not all under my control, but it gives me the best shot for me to be there. And, uh, and in the end, uh, I'm able to have some influence and value in people's lives that I care about the most. So, like, I, I know this is hard. I know some, like, I've got this little thing coming up saying comments have been filtered because they want to, I know some of this, it's a hot button for some of you. I'm sure they were filtered. You know, I get it, man. Uh, I get how hurtful it is when your kids don't appreciate you or what you've done and uh, when you're estranged from your kids. Uh, and the problem is I think everybody's looking for guarantees and there's not any. The only, the only thing you can be sure of is that God will help you be the best version of you that you can be. And so I hope that's what happens. If you go to, our, to my bio here, uh, when, as we get done, I've got a gift I want to give you. It's, it's some tips some practical things you can start doing. Uh, and here's the thing. If it's not going it, as well as you like it, or you'd like it, it's going well, but you'd like it to get better. Uh, I'm just asking you to try a couple of these things. Give a couple of these things a shot, a shot, uh, take, we'll, we'll send you this PDF, this digital a uh, little cheat with some tips on uh, on parenting uh, adult kids. It's not for the faint of heart, man. It's it's a it's it's a it ha this season has its own challenges. I'm I'm uh, filming tomorrow a couple of more installments of uh, this class that we're getting ready to release, which is on uh, just some more in depth teaching on. Uh, how we build these relationships with our adult kids. We we have to, I mean, the thing is, man, it's like, this is new to all of us, right? Bianca, I'm praying for you, man. I know there's nothing like struggling with an adult 
uh, in a relationship with your adult child. I'm crying with you, girl. If we, if we stay on there long enough, I literally will start crying. But do you see these people that are saying something back to you, like praying for you? That's what I want this to be, is I want this to be a place we can come and talk about these things and then, like, whoop, let's carry each other's burdens, right? Uh, I, I want to get some tools in your hands, and I want to build a community where together we can pray and help each other along the road and and we can be frustrated about where we are and not get frustrated with each other, you know? Uh, I, I am not an expert. I do not play one on TV, but I am passionate about this. Uh, and uh, I have spent a lot of time studying through and thinking through uh, what it means to build these kind of relationships. So take care. God bless everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of what, of our little community. Uh, go to beagobi.com. Uh, and you can find out a lot about what we do here, and uh, we're excited about doing it. We appreciate you. Uh, take care. God bless. Good to see you.